this is the service for you. You're going to be encouraged. You're going to be blessed. You're going to be uplifted. And we want you to share this with somebody if you're online right now. Hit that share button wherever you're watching from and tell somebody that they need to watch with you. Amen? Yes. And we're so blessed to have those that are here tonight as well. Let's uh, open our hearts in prayer together. Father, we just thank you for the word of God. We thank you for your presence in this house and in every house, Lord God. We thank you that your, the, the message of the word changes hearts and changes lives. And we thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. You're welcome to inhabit our praises. You're welcome to change us inside and out. You're welcome to do whatever you wish to do tonight inside of us. We ask you to just move today. In, in lives, in Jesus' name, anoint us to hear what you're saying to us, in Jesus' name, amen. He's coming soon, he's coming soon, I'm looking for the For the trumpet, yes, I'm listening for a shout. Like the voice of an archangel ringing through the clouds. It's coming soon, he's coming soon. I'm looking for the day. It's coming soon, he's coming soon, and he will not be late. It's coming soon, he's coming soon. I feel it. Coming soon, he's coming soon. I feel it in my heart. He's coming soon, he's coming soon to take us all away. And those of us alive in him will meet him in the air. And then the twinkling of an eye will be out of here. He's coming soon. He's Glory flooding through, so brightly that it blinds the world while Jesus takes us home. He's coming soon, he's coming soon, I'm looking for the day. He's coming soon, he's coming soon, and he will not be late. He's coming soon, he's coming soon, I feel it. How many believe that tonight? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Maranatha. Amen. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? 
Jesus is calling. As you wait for the crown, tell the world of the treasure you found. Jesus is calling. Thank you, 
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the resurrection, too. Playing the keyboard is a little like our Christian life. If you're doing something wrong, you know it. <laughs> Thought, that note doesn't sound right at all. <laughs> it's kind of like the Holy Spirit checking us when we're doing something we're not supposed to be doing. You know, I was reading a devotional today by Kim Potter, and it really spoke to me. Second uh, Corinthians 6.14 is a verse that a lot of times it says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. And so many times we will apply that verse to people who get married or people who are uh, dating someone or someone who's going into business with somebody. We don't want to be yoked with an unbeliever. But, you know, we need to take that into our everyday life. We need to watch who we hang around with all the time. You know, sometimes we, we're in a work situation where we can't help who we have to be around all day. Sometimes we're even in family situations where it can't be helped. But do you know that you can change the atmosphere? And when you are going to work or when you're coming home from work or when you have your time alone in your room or when those unbelieving family members leave and you're there by yourself, put on praise and worship music and worship the Lord and change the atmosphere in your house and uh, build yourself back up because when you're around somebody that's angry all the time or someone who's always complaining or negative, uh, you know, if someone were to lay, uh, say Yolanda uh, lays down here on the floor, okay, and Anita walks up here, would it be easier for Anita to pull Yolanda up here where she is, or would it be easier for Yolanda to pull Anita down there? It would be a lot easier to pull somebody down because of gravity, right? And because of our nature, being born into this fallen world, it's easy for us to fall down rather than lift people up. So we have to be careful. I'm telling you, these days that we're living in, we don't need to be compromising. We, we need to be, be walking with the Lord. We need to be walking in a repentant attitude and a repentant spirit every day, guarding our heart. Because out of it is the issue of life. Everything comes out of our heart. And we need to guard our heart with the word of God. And guard who you allow to influence you. So this is your mama talking. And I'm, I'm encouraging you tonight to watch yourself. Watch yourself in these days that we're, that we're in. So if you need prayer tonight for something, I'd like to ask the prayer people to come up and just come up to one of these guys or gals to get them to agree with you. If you're watching online tonight, we want you to know that we pray over you every day. You say, how do you know I'm watching? We pray over those who are going to be watching online. God knows that you're going to be watching. So we thank God for you. You're a very important part of this service. And we want you to know that we agree with you tonight, that whatever it is you need God to do for you and for your family, we just pray that he will begin to move, move mountains out of the way, open doors for you that no man can shut, and do the things that need to be done for you to grow spiritually and to be able to have a life of abundance and godliness in this world. And we have some people tonight that we need to pray for. Judy, who is Sharon Golden's sister who lives out in California, has been diagnosed with vascular dementia. She has narrowing of her blood vessels, which is stenosis of the circulatory system 
and uh, that has caused this, but we know that God can heal it. And we thank you, Father God, for touching Judy and bringing her back to good health. Open those blood vessels, Father, and we bind any more strokes. We just say she will have no more strokes in Jesus' name. And Roma Burnson, who used to attend church here, fell at her home and has uh, injured her leg. She's been in the hospital. She's finally home now. So we just agree with Roma and Dale Burnson that by the stripes of Jesus, Roma was healed. We thank you, Father God. Touch that leg. Make it every whit whole in Jesus' name. Danny Rice has poison ivy. So we need to pray for Danny. We just thank God for uh, healing that allergic reaction to that poison ivy he came in contact with. Thank you, Father. Itching is a part of the curse, and we just rebuke that itching in Jesus' name. Danny is blessed, and he can't be cursed, and we thank you, Father, for healing that poison ivy. Wayne uh, is a friend of Yolanda's brother that lives up in Missouri, and he's having his pacemaker replaced and we thank God for a perfect procedure for Wayne and that this new pacemaker is going to be a blessing to him that it will work perfectly and that he will recover rapidly after that procedure is done her niece Magnolia is still experiencing nausea and blood pressure problems so we stand in the gap tonight for magnolia and we thank god for touching magnolia's body for driving that nausea out of her body for healing that place on her forehead where she had that little growth removed and for uh causing her blood pressure to reach normal levels and stay there in jesus name and our precious maria has a job interview on friday in uh we just agree that by the, I started to say by the stripes of Jesus, she was healed. But <laughs> what we need for Maria is that supernatural favor surrounding her. So we thank God for when she walks into that interview, that the person who's hiring, if this is the job that God has for Maria, the person who's hiring will know that she's the woman for the job. We thank you for favor surrounding her. Father, as they interview her, fill her mouth with your words to say. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We got a really good report on Sandy and Gary's son-in-law, uh, Joshua. He went home from the hospital today. The doctors was, said that he was doing really, really well, so they were happy about that. These, these people are having way too much fun. <laughs> it's good. Joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Uh, uh, Chris is going to sing during the offering. Yeah. Praise God. It's happy time. And uh, Genesis chapter 8. This is God... Speaking to Noah and his family, and we're all descendants of Noah. And while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. That belongs to us because he said, then God spoke to Noah in verse 8 of chapter 9. Then God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, As for me, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you. And that's all of us. Amen. So seed time and harvest will not end. So when you sow your seed into the soil of the kingdom of God, we are guaranteed by the covenant that uh, God made with Noah that we'll get a harvest. And we see the same principle incorporated uh, in the uh, uh, covenant that uh, God uh, cut with uh, Israel and also we see it in the New Covenant. We see the same promise extended all through all the covenants. Amen. Amen. <laughs> to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Seed time and harvest will not end. And we're believing for a hundredfold 
return. Exponential. And let's invite, I believe Chris is coming up now. And let's worship with Chris as we prepare our tithes and offerings. Let's welcome Chris. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. You know, there's going to come a time in this world where the focus will totally be on Almighty God. You won't be thinking about how you're going to pay your bills. You're not going to be thinking about how you're going to get well. The focus will be to fall on our faces and worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I want to tell you out there, if you are seeking something, maybe you don't know what it is, but I want to, I want to tell you that what you're seeking is that missing thing in you. And that is a hunger for you to have a relationship with the one that called you into existence. God created you for his purposes. And I just want to tell you, and I'm finding that out more day by day, even with myself. I've been serving the Lord for quite a few years. But I just ask the Lord, Father, reveal more of yourself to me. Reveal more of yourself to me. If you say that, God help me to understand what you want of me. Reveal yourself to me, Lord. Remove things in my life that keep me from understanding who you are and who you want me to be. And he will do just that. Amen. There's a day coming where we're just all going to bow down. There won't be any worry, no tears. If there are tears, maybe there'll be tears of joy. I don't know. Their song says there's no tears in heaven. Well, I think when you look upon the majesty of Almighty God and you can remember something about your past life, I think there'll be a lot of tears in heaven. Praise the Lord. Wonderful tears of happiness and thanksgiving. Thank you, Father. Amen. God sent His only begotten Son. He so loved the world, He gave His own Son, that no one should pass. His only begotten Son, He so loved this world, He gave His own Son, so no one would
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Chris. That was beautiful. Hallelujah. Praise God. Forgot to mention Brian is on the kiosk in the back, too. And if you're watching online, you can go to glorychurch.com, and there's a donate button there. And we have some prayer requests that have uh, uh, come in. But first, let's hold up our, our uh, offerings. And Father God, we just thank you that seed time and harvest will not end. And we thank you, Lord God. We're guaranteed a harvest. And we sow our seed into the soil of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, thank you for an exponential harvest, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. And uh, we want to pray for New Aves, for healing of bronchitis, and Elmer Romeo, uh, Romeo for heart and lung problems, and for Andrea's uh, dad for healing of a bad cough. Lord, we lift up New Aves, we lift up Elmer, we lift up Andrea's dad. We thank you that you took those stripes on your back and carried them to the cross at Calvary. For New Avis, Elmer, and Andrea's dad, the work's already been done. We ask that, uh, Lord God, you would touch him. There's no distance in prayer that you would touch these precious ones. Yeah. New Avis, Elmer, uh, Andrea's dad, be whole in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. All glory to Jesus, our healer. And just one announcement. We have the men's, well, maybe a couple of announcements. We have the men's breakfast meeting this Saturday at 9 a.m., and uh, also, uh, we're going to be having our first, on October 6th, the kickoff for Missions Month, and we're going to be having a meal here in the sanctuary. So if you haven't signed up, please let us know so we can kind of plan on how many are going to be here. So uh, we're going to have a great time together, but we're going to have a great time tonight as Brandon brings the word from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I believe it is. Let's welcome Brandon. Now I'm on. There we go. Hold those Bibles up and uh, stand up. <laughs> and let's say this together. Say, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete. Thoroughly equipped, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Every good work. Say, Lord Jesus, Jesus, equip me tonight. Equip me tonight. <laughs> Amen. You may be seated. Last week we were in chapter 9 and we talked about three different things in that chapter. We talked about the, re the reason we should support world missions. And then number two, the reason that we should maintain a humble heart. And then the last thing we learned from that chapter was the reason we should never quit running the race of faith. And tonight, we're going to move into chapter 10, and we're going to learn principles from the example of the children of Israel during their journey with Moses, fleeing from Egypt out of slavery into the promised land. And then second, we'll talk about what God's given us to combat temptation. So we're going to be talking about two different things, but actually a lot of things out of the, out of the children of Israel a lot of different areas, but uh, let's learn from the actions of the past of the children of Israel in the wilderness with Moses, and what did they do? That's the question. Let's start in verse 1. It says, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So they all passed through the sea. That's the first thing you want to see. They all, so they saw the Red Sea part. When they were caught between a rock and a hard place, can somebody say amen? As they say with the Red Sea in front of them and the Egyptians behind them, 
I would say that's a pretty bad place to be in the natural. But then they saw God supernaturally move and come through. Let's read about it in Psalm 77. Oh God, your ways are holy. Is there any God as mighty as you? You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the nations. By your strong arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. When the Red Sea saw you, O oh God, I love that. <laughs> when the Red Sea saw God, <laughs> its waters looked and trembled. The sea quaked to its very depths. The clouds poured down rain. This is in the New Living Translation. The thunder rumbled in the sky. Your arrows of lightning flashed. Your thunder roared from the whirlwind. The lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. And here's the verse we want to get to that's really, really, really good. Your road led through the sea. Your pathway through the mighty waters, a path way no one knew was there. You led your people along that road like a flock of sheep with Moses and Aaron as their shepherds. So God knew there was a road even though nobody else knew. He had that road there that whole time. And I want to tell you today that there are times in life when you're going to face situations just like they did and you're going to be sitting there going, what in the world am I going to do now? And I want to tell you, God has a road where, where you don't even know. He has a way where there seems to be no way. He does. I've seen it with my own eyes several, many, many times. The second thing they talk, he talked about it was all were baptized. They all saw the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. And they saw the cloud descend upon the mountain as Moses went up to receive uh, the Ten Commandments from God. And you know, all were baptized, he says, into Moses. Moses is a type of Christ. The baptism into Moses mentioned here represents and serves as a reminder of the fact that we were baptized into Christ at the new birth. Water baptism is a picture of what Jesus did in our hearts and the testimony of what happened inside of us when we got born again. The old us is passed away, buried, and dead. We go into the water that symbolizes that. We come up out of the water. We're raised to newness of life, just like what happened when Jesus came into our hearts and changed us. The old us is gone. The new us is here in Jesus' name. And Colossians 2 talks about that. Let's read about it. In Him, this is verse 11, you were also circumcised with the uncircumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ buried with Him in baptism, in which you were also were raised with Him through faith in the working of God, who raised Him from the dead, and you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, He has made alive together with Him, having forgiven you all, all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and He has taken it out of the way. Oh, I love it. He's taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Having disarmed. He just ripped the weapons out of their hands. Disarmed the principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The pillar of cloud and fire. That represents the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The manifest presence of God. The Lord's glory, church. Hallelujah. The glory of God. The manifest presence of God. And then they all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank, drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. The same spiritual food, the children of Israel, God provided daily bread for them in the form of manna. And it was sweet like honeycomb. 
And they called it manna, which actually meant in Hebrew, what is it? (laughs) What is it? (laughs) We don't know what this is. Because it was bread from God that rained down from heaven each day. And they were supposed to gather enough for the day every morning and not keep it overnight or it was spoiled. And the only time it didn't spoil overnight was when they prepared for the Sabbath and collected double the amount needed so that on the Sabbath they could rest. The daily bread provided by God represents God's Word. That manna from heaven every day that we get into the Word and we put it into our spirit man. We put it into our hearts and we, re- we rest in the Lord because we have the Word of God in our lives. We're, we're fed by the Word. We need to read the Word of God every day. We need to fill our hearts and minds with God's Word every day. We need to be nourished every day with the bread of God's Word. Matthew 4.4 4 and Luke 4.4, 4, both, co- both uh, chronicle the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness by the devil. And what did he do when, when the devil said, hey, turn these stones into bread? He quoted Deuteronomy and he said, it is written... Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. John 6, 35 says, Jesus told them, he said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. John 1 declares that Jesus is the word, and as we read the written word of God every day, We are eating of that bread of life and receiving that daily spiritual food that we need to live and walk successful in Jesus. Amen. We need to make time for God's Word. We need to read it in written form or listen to it on audio or better yet, do both. Amen. I like to do both. I listen to it and read it at the same time. And that way I'm hearing it and I'm getting it in my eyeballs. (laughs) Get filled up and stay filled. Be being filled with the Holy Ghost, but also be being filled with the bread of God's Word. The next part of uh, 1 Corinthians, it talks about the rock. You know, it says that they drank of that rock, the rock of Christ. We all know what that refers to. It refers to that time when Moses struck the rock in the wilderness and, and water flowed out. But he struck it twice, and, and God, the reason that God actually put judgment on Moses was because of that, because it, 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 took, it, it actually, uh, instead of symbolizing crucifying Jesus, Jesus once, it messed it up, and, and, and it, was cruci- he, it was like he was crucified twice in the sh- type and shadow of that message. And, and uh, God said, no, 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 that, that, didn't, that won't do. That can't stand. We need to correct that. But that rock of Christ doesn't get corrected. (laughs) He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and we can drink of that rock today. Amen? The Bible says that that he told them, he said, just if, if you're thirsty, come to me and drink. Hallelujah. Drink of that living water. He says, I got water you do not know of, he told the woman at the well. All we need to do is draw from that well. Dad preached about it recently. Draw, from, draw joy from that well of salvation. Drink of that joy. Amen? 1 Corinthians 10, back again. Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters as, some, as were some of them. As it is written... The people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. This is referring to the passage in Exodus 32 when Aaron made the calf idol out of the jewelry. You know, it's funny what he did when Moses asked him, what happened, you know, when he came down the mountain? And he said, well, you know, I mean, is it, we just, the, we just, the jewelry was thrown in and this calf came out, just all of a sudden, just boom. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was just out of control. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron uh, made the calf idol out of the jewelry, is what he did. He tried to pass the buck. <laughs> like it was, 
but he actually did make it. And they rose up to dance around it and glorified this idol as the one who provided for them a way out of Egypt and provided for their needs in the wilderness. And they were punished for their disobedience and worshiping this man-made idol instead of the true and living God. And let's go back and keep reading here in, in 1 Corinthians 10.8. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did, and in one day, 23,000 fell. And uh, most Bible scholars consider this a reference back to Numbers 25, verse 9, where the 23,000 refers to the worship of the gods of Moab and the sexual immorality between some of the Israelite men and the daughters of Moab. And this is known as the rebellion of Baal of Peor, Baal, at which uh, 20, it says in there 24,000 died by the plague. But as noted here, Bible scholars said that, wasn't, that was just an understatement by Paul. That was simply an understatement, not an inaccuracy. 1 Corinthians 10.9. So that's what that referred to. See, we're learning about types and shadows here. He said, don't do that. Don't be disobedient. Don't get caught up in sexual immorality. Don't get caught up in in worshiping the things of the flesh and idolizing the things of the flesh. Don't be so sucked in by the glitz and the glamour and the, and, you know, uh, girl, uh, what is it? Girls, gold, glitz, and glamour, you know, all the different things. They all start with G, all these things. Um, 1 Corinthians 10, 9 says, nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. He's talking about all these judgments. This is referring to a passage also in Numbers 21. It says, then they journeyed, let's start in verse 4. They journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there's no food and no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people. Fiery serpents. That had to have been a sight. And they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it up on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole, and so it was, if a serpent had bitten anyone, When he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The serpent on the pole is a type and shadow, again, of what Jesus did for us on the cross at Calvary to set us free from sin and for the healing purchased by his blood shed for us as well. Jesus spoke to Nicodemus about this when he came to to Jesus at night in John 3. Y'all remember that? John 3, 16. We'll read John 3, 14 through 16, and we'll hear about it right here. And as Moses lifted up the serpent, in the wilderness. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes. It doesn't say, it says whoever. I mean, He can change anybody. Think of the worst person you can think of. He can change that one in a second or actually less than that. Twinkling of an eye, amen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Let's keep going. See what else Paul has to say in this first part of 1 Corinthians 10. Let's go to verse 10. Nor complain. As some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. 
There were several instances in Scripture where the children of Israel were caught complaining against Moses, and they kept being judged for it every time. They, they would question his leadership. They would question authority. They would come against this or complain about the food or the lack of food that they liked or whatever, you know. And I mean, they wanted meat one time and God sent quail, you know, but he judged them for their bad attitude after that. What do we learn from this? Avoid giving in to the temptation to complain and bicker when things don't go the way we think they should. Avoid it with all, at all costs. I want to read something to you that I think y'all will get a kick out of. And maybe we'll learn something from it too. There was a boy named Grumble Tone who ran away to sea. I am sick of things on land, he said, as sick as I can be. A life upon the bounding wave will suit a lad like me. The seething ocean billows failed to stimulate his mirth, for he did not like the vessel nor the dizzy rolling berth. And he thought the sea was almost as unpleasant as the earth. He wandered into foreign lands. He saw each wonder, wondrous sight, but nothing that he heard or saw seemed to be exactly right. And so he journeyed on and on, still seeking for delight. He talked with kings and ladies fair. He dined in courts, they say, but always found the people dull and longed to get away, to search for that mysterious land where he would like to stay. He wandered over all the world. His hair grew white as snow. He reached that final born at last where all of us must go, but never found the land he sought. The reason you would know? The reason was that north or south, where'er his steps were bent, on land or sea, in court or hall, he found but discontent, for he took his disposition with him everywhere he went. <laughs> See, you got to put up with yourself, don't you? So we need to change us. And if we change us, then what we see changes. Amen? How we see things changes when we change inside. Let's read about that in Philippians 2. Paul said in verse 12, he said, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. He's like, work, work out your own stuff, you know? For, verse 13, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Verse 14, do all things with what? Without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. He says, you want to make me happy? He's telling them. He says, don't complain. Quit complaining. Quit grumbling. Be a light. Amen? The way we're a light is to be full of joy. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Instead of complaining, find something to be happy about. Find something to be joyful about. Choose joy. Choose something to be thankful for. Maintain an attitude of gratitude. And your light will shine brighter than you can even imagine. Amen? Instead of, why me, God? Like we're so often wanting to do. I challenge you to praise God right then and say, what now, God? What now? What now? I'm here. What do you want? <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. What do you need for me to do? I'll do it. That's what Paul did. He was knocked off his horse on his back. And what did he say? He said, what now? <laughs> That's what we need to do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He'll direct your paths. Amen. Verse 12. Let's keep going here. We're almost done with our teaching tonight. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you, except such as common to man, except such as common to man. Um, but God is faithful. How many know that? Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, this is what he does, will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Paul talked about watching our own examples and, and, and then he talks about how to resist temptation. He says, 
let him who thinks he stands take heed. So you need to, he says, watch yourself. You know, there's an old little song, by a kid's song that comes to mind, you know, be careful little eyes what you see, be careful little ears what you hear, be careful little feet where you go, you know, it, it's, and it's true. We have to watch ourselves and not fall prey to the, you know, sometimes we walk into our own traps. And when we say, we just walk into the traps ourselves. I want to read a story before we go. There's an old story of an eagle who on an early morning during the spring thaw, he soared high above the forest looking for something to eat. And as he followed the course of a river, he looked down and spied a small rodent. You know how eagles can see (laughs) a long way. And he was trapped on a piece of ice that had broken free and was floating downstream. So this little mouse was on this ice. Seeing an easy meal, he swooped down, landed on the ice, killed the mouse, and began to eat while he was standing there on the ice. And as he continued his meal, he saw that his perch was rapidly approaching a waterfall. But determined to finish eating and thinking he would rise into the air and to to safety at the last moment, he continued his course. And as the ice neared the falls, the eagle finished his last bite. Satisfied with his breakfast, he spread his mighty wings and attempted to rise skyward as the chunk of ice tipped over the edge. And while enjoying his meal, however, he had failed to realize that the warmth of his feet had caused his claws to become embedded in the ice. Try as he might, he could not dislodge him and free himself from what had now become the burden that would carry him to his death on the rocks below. Don't fool yourself. Don't be overconfident. Don't put yourself into situations that you can't handle in life. Don't walk into the devil's trap. Amen. And don't be so overconfident thinking, well, it'll never happen to me. You know, I can overcome this. I can overcome that. You know, one drink's not going to hurt. One, one, one cigarette's not going to kill me. That kind of thought. That kind of thing. To give an example. <laughs> one, one look at that pornographic website's not going to hurt anything. You know. That's a recipe for disaster. Given the right circumstances, any of us are capable of messing up and falling into that same trap that that eagle had fallen into. You know, we need to follow the the plan that Peter set forth. He said in uh, verse 8, he talked about resisting the... He talked about, he said, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time in verse 6, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Then he says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Then he says, resist him steadfast in the faith. He says, you know, it's like, it's like what Paul was saying, take heed, stand strong, you know, knowing that the same sufferings you are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. God is able to provide that way of escape for you. We need to heed His voice. We need to heed the voice of the Holy Spirit. Put boundaries around ourselves and prevent the onslaught of temptation in areas that we are weak in. Amen? Stay accountable. Find somebody that you can stay accountable to in areas where you're frequently tempted. Amen? No temptation. God is faithful. No temptation is is something you can't overcome with God. The Bible says that the Bible says in, in, in uh, Philippians chapter 3, we all know that verse, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I like what Martin Luther said. He said, temptations, of course, cannot be avoided, but because we cannot prevent the birds from flying over our heads, there is no need that we should let them nest in our hair. Temptation is not a sin in itself. Our response and giving in to said temptation is when the sin can be birthed. That's what he's also said there. So we need to just realize that. We need to not give in and ask God to strengthen us. Amen? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He provides that way of escape. Amen? Glory. 
Well, bow your hearts with me tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you for the Word of God. We thank you for your presence that's been in this house all night tonight. We thank you for those watching online. We thank you for those uh, hearts represented in this house as well. Lord, we thank you for uh, just ministering to hearts tonight, Lord God. Shore up areas we need shoring up in, whether it be complaining, whether it be, um, whether it be uh, just uh, temptation, whether it be just anything, Lord, whether we need to read the Word more, uh, pray more in the Spirit, whatever it may be, Lord, just shore it up, Lord. Show us what we need to do, Lord, and the areas we need to let you work on by the Holy Ghost. And help us to be obedient, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for being our way of escape and our rock that we can stand on. Thank you, Jesus. If anyone doesn't know Jesus, if everybody will stand to your feet tonight. If anyone doesn't know Jesus, if you can just say this prayer with me tonight and, and also everybody here, if y'all can say it for the benefit of those on the internet, just say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, with my whole heart, I repent of my sins, and I turn to you. Lord Jesus, I surrender all to you. I accept you now and forever as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving me, saving me, and giving me a new life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, we worship you tonight. We thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And if anybody has a word from the Lord before we go tonight, just go ahead and speak it out where you're at, and our mics will pick you up. The Holy Spirit speaking something through you prophetically. Go ahead and speak it out. Thank you, Lord. We wait on you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We worship you, Lord. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, getting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Mm. Yes, amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen, God. Thank you, Lord. Upward call of God. I thank you, Lord God, that we are not dogs that return to the vomit. Amen. But we are a new creation. Woo! Yes. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Yes. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have come. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I kept hearing after Dad uh, said that first scripture, I kept hearing, look up for your redemption draws nigh. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're, we lift our eyes to the hills. From where does our help come from? It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. I love that psalm. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He's our helper, he's our strength, he's our standby, he's the one that settles us and strengthens us, as that scripture said. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. We have it all in him. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Well, glory to God. If y'all uh, remember, we have church Sunday, and we want to see you here. So if you can make it, please come. Oh, okay. Lord, we just stretch our hands out towards that camera, and we say... John Andrews, be healed. We speak to, to your heart, and we thank you, Lord, for a proper pulse. We thank you for uh, the, the right heart rate, and we thank you, Lord, for peace in the name of Jesus. I thank you that he'll lie down in peace and sleep, and his sleep will be sweet in the name of Jesus. Blood pressure be normal in Jesus' name. Be normal in the name of Jesus. We declare it. Amen. We agree with you, John, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings on all of you tonight. Amen. Thank you, sir.